So President Uhuru's Kenyatta State of the Nation address has elicited mixed reactions. At the hear of the president's speech was peace and reconciliation, with the head of state making a personalized apology to Kenyans. So did the State of the Nation address meet the expectations of Kenyans? Well, we want to take that address into the Monikans' room and find out what the speech means to the Republic. Welcome to the State of the Nation. And I have a great panel with me this morning. Sitting closer to me is Bernard Wakoli. He's a political analyst. And of course, to him, it's Moses Kajuang, the senator of Homa Bay Men. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your time this morning. Thank you. Good morning. Um, Kajang, I'll start with you in regards to that. Do you feel as if President Uhuru adequately addressed the nation's problems yesterday? Did he sufficiently do so? Uh, thank you. I was present when the speech was delivered. Uh, this is unlike uh, last year You're right. when we boycotted uh, the speech. And it is unlike the previous year when some of us were kicked out of parliament <laughs> for heckling the president and disrupting his speech because you are trying to converse certain issues that were going wrong in the country, yeah. issues that the president addressed yesterday. Yes. Uh, because at that point two years ago, we were saying corruption was running away. We were saying we needed certain electoral reforms. We were saying we needed reconciliation and billing as as, uh, you know, a state of nationhood. And um, I think uh, two years down the line, uh, the president is coming to that realization. Mm -hmm. The president's speech cannot be open-ended during the State of the Nation address because it is prescribed in the Constitution. There are three things he must address. He must address the progress on realization of national values and principles as enshrined in Article 10 of the Constitution. He must address Parliament on our status on fulfillment of international obligations, and he must also address Parliament on issues of security. So he has an agenda, a fixed agenda to address. The apology and uh, the reaching out is part of the national values, because one of the national values is national unity. So I think that was in line mm -hmm. with the constitutional requirement. And I think uh, this time round, the president uh, did well. The speech was not as powerful, as inspiring as other speeches that he has read. But the hallmark of that speech was the bit where he apologized. It is not the first time he apologized. Mm -hmm. Three years ago, the president apologized in line with the recommendations of the Truth, Justice, and Re Reconciliation Committee. And uh, I think coming out of that very divisive elections, the president set the tone for national healing and reconciliation. What color do you agree? Yeah, uh, I'll agree with the, uh, Senator Kajuang to some extent, but uh, I think uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta must be the happiest uh, person uh, so far because uh, when you look at the past uh, State of the Nation addresses, like the one he did in, uh, in September, it was very acrimonious. In fact, the other side of the uh, political divide boycotted the, 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 the address, and it was like a jubilee affair. But looking at what happened yesterday, the atmosphere was very conducive. People were, you know, uh, welcoming, and they felt uh, everything was on course. But having said that, there are some key issues that, um, despite the fact that he, he tabled the three reports, which is supposed to do, uh, we have paid more focus on the apology uh, mm -hmm, part, mm -hmm. and you know, and these four uh, agenda points. But we have not interrogated what were the co uh, what were the the issues raised. Or, or the issues that uh, were uh, included in those three reports that he tabled in Parliament, which is uh, constitutional, which is supposed to do. Then uh, looking at the issue of uh, apology, yes, it's good to apologize, but apology must come with the, you know, that honesty, yeah, as in uh, it should come with the sincerity of the leaders, because just saying that I apologize without mentioning what you are apologizing for, you know, I expected the president uh, say maybe I apologize for the brutality of my uh, state. Um, security agencies on the uh, opposition. The lives you know, that were yeah, lost. The lives that were lost and those other things. But those were not mentioned. So people went on on the hype of apologizing, shaking hands, you know, doing such kind of things. But there must be justice for this country to move forward or for people to know that they, they, they are part of this system. Because uh, uh, in my take, I think the president is more concerned about his legacy, about uh, how he's going to leave Kenya because, you know, he has four years. This is his left. last time. Yeah, this is the last time. So by bringing the country together and uh, knowing that you'll have his way uh, to run for the next four, four years, 
then uh, he has nothing to lose. And within his speech, he touched on a f uh, f four of his big agendas. Of course, new housing was one of them. Mm -hmm. As Kajuang, you've also insisted security was one of them. The economy took a very big chunk of his speech. But before we can even dive into exactly what he was talked, what he touched on, what do you think he did not touch on that maybe needed attention in his speech? There's a motion I intend to present in Parliament to uh, request the president at a state of the nation address to add a fourth report, mm -hmm. and that would be a food balance sheet. Mm -hmm. Kenya is food insecure, and we are food insecure because of just lousiness in our value chain, lousiness in our agricultural practices. Mm -hmm. It is raining too much now. People are marooned, people are not farming. And then when the rains go away, people will be queuing for relief food. Uh, so, so it would be important, in my view, it would be important that the president presents to parliament a food balance sheet. Mm -hmm. A food balance sheet is a summary of the food stock mm -hmm. available in a country. Mm -hmm. What do we expect to produce? What do we expect to import? And in summary, tell the country that we are food secure. If that becomes a presidential obligation, then the guys in the Ministry of Agriculture are going to get serious. And the people at the counties are going to get serious, knowing that every year the president will have to present that report to parliament. Right. For me, that was uh, something that I would really wish the president to present. He has no obligation right now to present it, and that obligation can come through a motion of parliament or it can come through a constitutional amendment because the functions and powers of the president are contained in the constitution. All right, so for you, food was the big one that missed out. I, I believe food security, he touched it because food security is part of it the big four, the four, but he talked about food security from a futuristic perspective. Mm. A food balance sheet is, talks about the current. Mm. It tells you today, what do we have? Mm. It is like in a household, uh, uh, husbands and wives. And unfortunately in Africa, it's, it's the wives who are, are accountable for food stocks in the house. But it is important for you to know as a household, do we have enough food to feed, to feed us today? Mm -hmm. Do we have enough food to feed us into the week? or into the month. I think that is something that we should clamor for, mm -hmm. that the president must present to the nation. Well, for you, what missed out in that speech? First of all, he did not touch on the issues of importing doctors, the looting yeah. in the NHIF. Yes. What for you did he not touch on that he should have touched on? Uh, I think the most important thing, as uh, uh, Senator Kajuanga said, is about agriculture. And uh, uh, food security is a very, very important thing. Because in this country, we have some parts of the country that have surplus. And we have some parts of the country that uh, actually are starving. People are dying of uh, hunger. And, mm. uh, you know, we have some parts where food is being thrown, you know. So there need to be a strategy or uh, some measures to ensure that those who have surplus are able to take to places where people are starving. Having said that, um, I also mentioned the issue of um, uh, being a youth. I also mentioned the issue of unemployment. Uh, I think... Maybe that one can come in line with this, uh, uh, is it one of these four agenda of uh, um, industrialization? industrialization. Mm -hmm. But again, I expected the president to actually take it as a, a point, to take it as a, something that is very serious to this country. Because we have so many young people graduating from our universities, but, but they, they, they don't have anywhere to, to go, they have nothing, they don't have any source of income, you know. And these are people who have even PhDs, people have masters and if we can make agriculture attractive make agriculture you know look like something that people can engage in instead of young people moving from rural areas coming to cities to look for employment they, we have people who are trained in agriculture they can actually focus on developing rural uh, productivity in terms of ensuring that the food we produce is able to reach the market through the food chain you know channels and uh, food value chain so that we we don't have these scenarios where we have a bulk of young people in the cities actually doing nothing. When we have land in rural areas or in some parts of the country that are not uh, utilized. Speaking of land, what I felt like probably the President Uhuru Kenyatta could have touched on is mm. the issue of deforestation, yeah. um, the issue of poaching. It's such a big issue here in Kenya that we still are not mm. talking about. In short, where is his aspect on the environment? Poaching, deforestation that we are seeing, the, the untidiness within Mombasa CBD, even here in Nairobi. <laughs> Nairobi. And this is East Africa's gateway. <laughs> now, yesterday in President Uhuru Kenyatta's State of the Nation, one of the big agendas that he, of course, he had to show off was the economy. I mean, he opened Terminal 2 a NGK, which is a big deal. Of course, the Isiolo to Moyale Road, which is a very big part of Vision 2030 that has cost billions. Take a look what he had to say in regards to the economy. I believe 
all of us, irrespective of our political persuasion, are in broad agreement. Kenyans want to see lower costs of living. They want jobs for their sons and daughters. They want affordable food on their tables. And indeed, Kenyans want to see broad and inclusive prosperity. These goals, honorable members, are reasonable. And indeed, some of them are constitutional requirements in their own right. None of us today in this august house will have forgotten that last year was an election year or that our region was severely affected by drought. Despite this, honorable members, it is encouraging to note that despite these challenges, our economy remained resilient. Our real gross domestic product grew by some 4.9% in 2017, much higher than the 3.6% for world real GDP and 2.6% for sub-Saharan Africa. All right, a 4.9% growth in GDP in 2017. What President Uhuru Kenyatta may have not told you is that it's been the slowest margin in five years, and of course, a 20% growth in tourism. Back in 2013, you know, he was he promised that he would we want to see a more aggressive infrastructure growth and connectivity that will attract more investors. But Senator Kajuang, the whole point is that all this is amazing. The Isiolo Terminal 2A and 4.9 um, GDP growth, despite the slowest, it's still a, it's still okay. 20% growth in tourism, despite how the country last year was in a period of, you know, election. But all this at the expense of where, as a country, we're sitting on a debt of four trillion? Yes, one of the national values is sustainable development. Mm -hmm. And even as we brandish the figures of how we've grown 20% tourism, four point something on real GDP, the question that the president must help the nation to address is how sustainable it is. Right. We've talked about the sustainability of that debt, and probably that could be something that the president ought to have alluded to. Sustainability is not only looked at from monetary perspectives. It is looked at also from the angle that you brought in, the environment and our natural resources. Are we using them in a manner uh, that can guarantee future generations that they will continue to benefit from them and that they'll continue to exploit them? And really, this ought to be an improvement in the president's speech going forward. Mm -hmm. That sustainable development is not just about the numbers that come from the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics, but it needs to be holistic. It needs to look at uh, how sustainable that is. Is it growth for today or growth that takes us into the future? It, admittedly, Kenya, if you look at its growth graph, every five years, whenever we have an election, we always have a problem. And more so, when you have an election where an incumbent is defending their positions. Mm -hmm. Just trace it from the first presidential elections we had in this country. And that was in, uh, I think that was in 1992. Every time an incumbent is defending, you are going to have an economic performance that is disturbed. And that was the same case even in the previous year. If you look at the graphs, they're always going up midstream. And when you go into elections, it comes it, down. It, it, it comes down. Yeah. We need to fix our electoral systems. We need to fix our attitude towards elections. We need to fix this competition that we associate with elections so that we are able to grow despite the electioneering period. Mm -hmm. We are able to walk and chew gum at the same time. Mm -hmm. It should be possible to, uh, to campaign to electioneer and it should be possible for the economy to grow. Mm -hmm. There is no reason why tourists should stop coming to Kenya simply because we are going into elections. I like the sound of that. What also President Uhuru Kenyatta said, and I quote, is that the Isiolo Moyale Road is transforming the economy, especially for the people of Isiolo. But Wakoli, do you think that these specific projects truly contribute to Kenyans within those specific counties? For example, now that Trukana has oil, and when we start dr drilling it, will we see that specific county be the very first one to you know, take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. Now he's also given the example of the Isiolo and Moyale. 
Uh, Kenya is a very wonderful country, and Kenya is endowed with so much natural resources and, you know, and uh, manpower. But what we lack in this country is committed and sincere leaders. Leaders who are able to utilize the resources we have for the betterment of the citizens, for the betterment of our people. Mm -hmm. Most of the leaders we have are very selfish. They think about their interest first. When there's something, they look at it in terms of how am I going to benefit from it before it benefits the Kenyans or the people that they are supposed to serve. I think we should have an attitude change in our, in our leadership. To have a leadership that is people-centered, a leadership that is, you know, is, is, is answerable to the citizens. But the current kind of crop that we have is uh, the big man syndrome. I'm the boss, I can have everything, I can accumulate whatever I have at the expense of Kenyans. Look at the infrastructure that you are talking about. Yes, uh, infrastructure to some extent can help to spur economic development or economic growth, but that one can only be achieved if people in those counties are able to realize the importance of those uh, infrastructure development. The development of, uh, of roads is good because goods will be able to move from one place to another without, uh, without haste. But how are those roads sustained? Because we have, have cases in this country where a road is constructed today, uh, we have you know, a very uh, splash kind of you know, uh, uh, doing what, uh, uh, commissioning it, then after one year, it's full of potholes. Mm -hmm. What are the quality of the infrastructural programs that we are putting in place? Are they something that can sustain for years? Because we do constructions. I, I know there, there, there have been roads constructed in this country, but how have they you know, replicated or how have they uh, spurred economic development in those counties. Right. So those are some of the questions that we need to start interrogating ourselves. Bennett has touched on a specific issue, which is quality. And when we come back from this short break, we'll touch on quality, especially on matters within our medical system here in Kenya, as well as do we need to change our approach on political competition in this country? More when we come back with Senator Kajong, as well as Bernard Wakoli. This is Money Express. Stay with us.